In 1856, workers in the Neander Valley in Germany uncovered a very unusual skull that would eventually become known as the Man of Neander Valley or the Man of Neanderthal in German. Neanderthal was significantly different from modern humans. For one thing, you'll notice that unlike modern humans, the mouth seems to be pulled out a bit so that the face does not slope straight up and down, it's actually at a bit of an angle. Very, very light angle, but the angle is definitely there. The jawbone here, it slopes back, which is like what we have in the chimpanzee. Uh, the forehead is flattened. It is not so pronounced as it is in modern humans. Um, and there's a bit of a brow ridge, right? So as we saw in chimpanzees, there's this, what appears to be a, a ridge running over the eyes. All right, so if we're uh, gonna keep track of those uh, criteria that we set up when we looked at the chimp and human skeletons, looking at whether these things walked upright or not, the thigh bone of the Neanderthal is extremely similar to the thigh bone of a modern human being. Not exactly the same, but it's pretty close and it's got that angle that we're looking for. The pelvis is bowl-shaped, just like the pelvis of um, modern people. And the foramen magnum is, sure enough, on the bottom of the skull, indicating that the uh, head stood on top of the spinal column. All three of these things indicate that Neanderthals pretty much walked around upright. Um, and they really do look a lot like modern people from a skeletal standpoint. Below the neck, they're very, very, very similar to us. Homo erectus is really different from what we have in uh, living creatures and in chimpanzees. So now we have uh, an even more pronounced muzzle pulling out of the mouth, the jutting forward of the mouth. We have a jawbone here that slopes pretty much straight back, so there's no chin in this creature, and this one's broken, but uh, you can see the remains of what was going to be a pretty big brow ridge. The brain case is also quite small. This thing had a very tiny brain, and you can see pretty much no forehead. It's totally flat on the top. The eyes would have been very much up towards the top of the head without a forehead. And yet at the same time, when you look at the skeleton of this creature, this one in particular, Lake Turkana Boy, uh, the skeleton is really, really, really similar to what we have as a skeleton, what I have as a skeleton. So even though the skull seems to be very different, the body seems to be very recognizably human. Looking at our criteria for um, walking around upright, uh, for Homo erectus, we find that the uh, thigh bone is, once again, very similar to modern people, just like we saw in Neanderthals. The pelvis is round and bowl-shaped, like our pelvis. And the foramen magnum is, in fact, right on the bottom of the skull, indicating that the head stood right on top of the spinal column. So again, we find ample evidence that these creatures walked around on two legs. And frankly, below the neck, Homo erectus looks very, very similar to modern Homo sapiens. This is the tiny skull uh, that goes by the museum code KNMER1813. Uh, it's really tiny, as you can see. I can put the whole thing right in the palm of my hand. Uh, very itty bitty. Um, very pronounced muzzle. There's a very pronounced slope to the face. The brow ridge is there, but it's not huge. Not like it is in chimpanzee. Certainly not like it is in something like Homo sapiens. Um, but the brain is really small. It's a really tiny creature. Um, it's been referred to as Homo habilis, which means handyman. 
Uh, and at the time of its discovery, it was believed to be a very important missing link in human evolution. Looking at our criteria again for walking around upright, uh, the thigh bone and the pelvis of Homo habilis are very poorly known. We don't really have a lot to go on there. There are scraps of bone that imply that these bones were quite different than modern people. But we do have a foramen magnum, and yes, it does come out of the bottom of the skull, indicating that whatever Homo habilis is, it walks around probably on two legs. This skull goes by the museum code KNMER1470. It is uh, significantly larger than what we've seen in Homo habilis, uh, but it has many of the characteristics that we've seen in other taxa. Uh, it does have a, a fairly decent um, brow ridge, not huge, but it's definitely there. The face here, as reconstructed, is somewhat flat, but again, very little forehead. The brain is large, but there's not much of a nice forehead on this creature, like we have in modern people. And even though the brain is large, it's still fairly small by modern human standards. So this creature goes by the name Homo rudolfensis. With Homo rudolfensis, looking at our three criteria again, once again we find the thigh bone and the pelvis not known. The frame and magnum, oddly enough, also is not known. That's just reconstruction there. So. Um, Basically, we take uh, evidence of Homo rudolfensis walking around upright based on just the similarity of the skull to other uh, skulls of hominins that we know of that walked around on two legs. Otherwise, the evidence here is not clear. It's not as clear as, for example, a Neanderthal or, or a Homo erectus. The first half of the 20th century, our first examples of this uh, were found in the fossil record. This is Australopithecus uh, africanus. This species is called africanus. It's the southern ape. Australopithecus means southern ape. They were found initially in 1924 by Raymond Dart in South Africa. And later there have been other skulls that have been found as well, including uh, specimens from East Africa. Um, these guys are really, really, really different from humans. They have a very sloped face, uh, pronounced jutting muzzle, um, very thick brow ridge, really tiny brain case again, um, no forehead. Uh, and so you might be thinking, well, why in the world would anyone think that this is anything to do with modern humans? What in the world does this have to do with me? How can this be considered a relative of humans? Well, here's how. These guys, as you can see, have the foramen magnum coming straight out of the bottom, which is exactly the kind of condition we have in modern humans, which is why people get excited about this. Here we have something that is clearly not Homo sapiens, very different from modern human, and yet, from all indications, it was able to walk around on two legs. So our three criteria here for upright walking in Australopithecus, we find a thigh bone. This is the thigh bone of the famous Lucy fossil, uh, Australopithecus afarensis, and it's quite angled, uh, indicating that that's probably a biped or a two-legged walker. The pelvis is round and bowl-shaped like our pelvis. And the frame and magnum here on Australopithecus africanus, as you just saw, is in fact on the bottom of the skull, indicating that the head is on top of the uh, spinal column. Uh, so once again, in Australopithecus, we find evidence that these creatures walked around upright just like we do, even though they don't necessarily look a lot like us. So that's a brief view of the various sorts of hominins, everything from things that are very similar to modern humans, like Neanderthal here, to things that are very, very different from modern humans, like this tiny little Australopithecus skull. Uh, despite the diversity of form, though, 
we find one characteristic running through all the hominins that we looked at, and that is they all walked around on two legs. Now, in the case of Australopithecus, they didn't exactly walk around like we do on two legs, but nevertheless, it does appear from their anatomy that they could walk around on two legs just like we do. Um, so the question then is, what are they? What does this mean? What are, what are these creatures? Um, we could look in the modern world and we can see human beings walking around upright, chimpanzees and gorillas and orangutans not walking around upright. And we can see some vast differences there. So when we look into the fossil record and we find these things that sort of look like us, but not, the question is, what are they? 